Thank you, President Moorhead. Good morning. What a great day. Congratulations to all of you. And I want to first of all thank President Moorhead for giving me the honor of addressing this class of 2021. I also want to congratulate not just the students, but I also want to congratulate the families that are gathered here, uh, the ones that are also viewing this on uh, live stream. And congrats also to the faculty, the administration, and the deans that make up this great university. For the parents and families out there, I know this has been quite a journey for you also. I know this because I know a lot of swimming parents. You have undoubtedly seen some ups and downs in ways that our graduates might not even realize until they start families of their own. When I earned my degree here, and it was shaky for a while, from this great university in 1975, I never imagined I would have the privilege of addressing such an extraordinary group of students. And you're arguably the smartest group we have ever had. Why don't you give yourselves a hand today? When I, was, when I came here to Georgia, I was just trying to survive college and basically trying to find a way to, con to graduate. And quite frankly, I don't think I could have been any further from this podium today. When I was given my first head coaching job in 1979 by Coach Dooley to the tune of $8,000, the thought of training American swimmers even in one Olympic Games, let alone six, was an actual pipe dream. Never in my wildest dreams that I think we'd send 87 of our student athletes to the games, where they would earn a total of 38 medals. And we added a bunch this year. We added nine again this year. And win seven NCAA championships along the way. We are proud of what we've done. But I question when I, when I got the call from uh, President Moorhead, I wonder why he was asking me to do this speech today. I didn't ask him why, but I think I greatly suspect it had something to do with a fellow Georgia alumni who competed in the Georgia, or excuse me, in the Olympics this past summer. We had an outstanding summer. The very first event, something happened that never, ha never happens. It's taken almost 32 years in swimming to happen again. The very first event of the Olympic Games was swimming. It was the 400 individual medley. Two young guys, Chase Kalish, Jay Litherland, took a gold and a silver. That hasn't happened for 30 plus years that two, two guys from the same team got a gold and a silver in the same event. Outstanding stuff. Nine athletes brought back UGA ties, or I'm sorry, nine athletes with UGA ties brought back nearly, this is incredible, almost one third of our American medals. Being here at the University of Georgia, we've had some great kids, but I, I have to confess one thing here today. I also coached two athletes that were non-Georgia grads. And one, is, this is gonna hurt, but she meddled, but she trained here for two years and she considers herself a dog. She was a gator, but she finally saw the light and came to the University of Georgia. And we had a young man who's now sitting in Oxford uh, for his doctorate in engineering and he also won a gold medal and we took him in also and it worked out well, not just for them, but for the University of Georgia. Now that you are alumni, I know President Moorhead's hope for you is to pursue your dreams and unite you with the world's best. So I'm here to give you the abbreviated version of how University of Georgia changed my life and pretty much work opened up a whole world of excellence. I can tell you without exaggeration that this university and the people associated with it have given me much more, much of what is precious in my life and also my family's life. Many of the people I met on this campus as a student are still friends to this day, and these friendships and your friendships now will become more important to you as you grow older. If you take anything from this speech today, I want you to remember that any success that you will have will be predicated on relationships that you build. You will not do this alone. When I came to UGA from Philadelphia in the fall of 70, long before technology made it easy to connect with anybody, I think I called my parents once every two weeks. Two professors in particular made me feel like Athens was a home to me. I was floundering. 
I didn't know what to major in, I didn't know what to do. Uh, and Dr. Thomas Tuggle in the English department, who was my first teacher, my first quarter, my first period at the University of Georgia, and a friend of his, Dr. Chambers, Jerry Chambers, in comparative lit, encouraged me to pursue a major I was passionate about, English, and helped me with my schoolwork. They invited me to their family, family's dinners. They invited me to parties. They guided me throughout my very average academic career. They directed me to professors that they knew I would like because I, they knew my affinity to the professor was equally as important as the course itself. They taught me to always to be engaged. They taught me to be personal and also professional. They were great men. By example, they taught me one of the most important things that ended up that I used as being a coach. If you put the interests of others first, everything else is going to take care of itself. So be engaged, be engaged with people every day. Dr. Tuggle, Dr. Chambers, Jerry, Tom and Jerry both, they took me under their wings without expecting anything in return. I was not going to write the great American novel, and to this day I don't know what they saw in me. I think they saw I needed a lot of help. The neat thing about this day for me, and, being, and not just being in front of you, I get to thank them publicly. Dr. Thomas Tuggle, Dr. Jerry Chambers are here today, and if they could stand up, I would love to give them a hand. Where are you? Yep, if someone could find them. Does anyone know where they are? Where is it? All the way up. Men, thank you very much. <laughs> That relationship started in the fall of 70. All of you here can probably think of mentors who have helped change your lives also, and I hope you let them know how much you appreciate them. And do it before you leave if you have the chance. It doesn't, make much, or it doesn't take much to make a difference in someone's life, but being there for them, letting them know that you care, is always a great place to start. Your success in this world will not be solely driven by you. This is important, but it is up to you and imperative for you to define your dreams. Being an English major, it is only appropriate that I quote a poet today. The great Carl Sandburg wrote that nothing happens unless first a dream. In my 43 seasons as head coach, I've seen firsthand the power of a dream that is relentlessly pursued. One of my former student athletes, that President Nor Moorhead knows well, Shannon Vreeland, was not my most talented swimmer when she came in the fall of 2010. In our pecking order, she was the fifth best person in what she did best on our team, the 200 freestyle. She ended up competing in the 800 meter free relay at the 2012 Olymp London Olympics, took home a gold medal, set a world record with one of her Georgia teammates, Allison Schmidt, who has the third most medals of any woman in the history of the Olympic Games. You might find this hard to believe, but the history of the Olympic medalists is absolutely littered with people who are simply above average athletes and not great athletes. Think about that for a moment or two. It's actually a pretty cool thing. It means achievement at the highest levels is not limited to a select few. It's pretty much up to you. So how do these average and above average athletes win medals? Some people are willing to train harder show up for each and every practice, day in, day out, push themselves way out of a comfort zone. I encourage all my athletes to be persistent and consistent. <clears throat> These two traits are the difference between an above average career and a spectacular one. An easy way to remember it is PC. That's our PC at the, at the pool. Persistence and consistency. Being persistent and consistent will take you far, but not far enough. Your A and E, your attitude and your effort, they play a huge part in this also. And it's not just an attitude. Anybody can have an attitude. It's got to be a positive attitude. The fact that you are here in this stadium earning a degree from one of America's best universities, and it certainly is, tells me a lot about your talent and certainly about your potential. We all, everyone sitting here, everyone around you today, they have, that we all have high hopes for you. But I can tell you from experience that you will not always win, no matter how hard you try. 
I have coached an athlete that has missed the Olympic team by one one hundredth of a second. Matter of fact, it happened twice. Two of our athletes this summer, as much as we had success, two of them missed qualifying for the Olympic Games by 18 one hundredths. Life will throw you some curveballs regardless of what path you choose. But it is essential that you really go after what you want, even if you might fail. Regret is a lot worse than failure. To see others succeed and wonder if you could have done the same had you stepped out of your comfort zone, that would be a tough thing to live with. When you go after great things, your successes and your disappointments will be greater. But I guarantee you, your lives will be much better for it, and every effort will be worth it in the long run. Every effort. To paraphrase a hero of mine, Teddy Roosevelt, far better is it to dare mighty things, even though checkered by failure, than to take rank with those poor spirits who neither enjoy much nor suffer much. Realize this, you will be tested when you leave here. It might be right away if some of you are starting jobs almost immediately. And how you react to challenges will be the measure of you as a person. Learn from your failures, be persistent and consistent, put forth your very best attitude and effort, and your life will be fuller. In the last few weeks, I've been thinking a little bit about what it would be like to be a student right now as you are. And it would have been challenging with COVID. And as we all know, this is a tumultuous time in our country, which is not quite unlike the early 70s when I was here in school. It's a crazy time and it's natural for you to have any kind of trepidations as you venture out. And even if you are gainfully employed, and I've, I have a feeling about 90% of you already are. Thankfully, there is one constant in our life that unites us, the University of Georgia. You are dogs, and your university will always have your back and will lift you higher than you ever imagined. You will lean on this university more than you think as you grow older, and I'm living proof. So get out there, dare mighty, dream big, do everything you can do to be everything you can be. I wish you a full life with success professionally and personally. They go hand in hand, and one is a lot better with the other. Congratulations to the class of 2021. Go dogs, and let's give yourselves a gigantic hand. Let's go get them. Yep.